All right, here's a hot take for you guys. Winning the MVP award in baseball is really hard. I know, I know, crazy. But the list of players who were able to unanimously win the MVP award is crowded with generational talent, and that shouldn't be a surprise. Shohei Otani did this the most recently with his 2021 AL MVP win from just last year, and the last AL player to do it before him, a fellow angel in Mike Trout, is also pretty good from what I hear. Bryce Harper followed up in 2015 with a unanimous win of his own in the NL, and since 2000, Albert Pujols and Barry Bonds have also etched their name in this list, a list of just 15 players since the start of the expansion era in 1963. Frank Thomas cranked 41 home runs to claim his own in 1993, and this actually kicked off a unique streak of four unanimous MVPs in five years from 1993 to 1997, by far the most in such a short amount of time in MVP history. Jeff Bagwell led MLB with a 750 slugging percentage and 116 RBI to nab his own in 1994, and Ken Griffey Jr. hit an otherworldly 56 home runs to get his MVP award in 1997. The 1996 NL MVP winner rounds out this select group of four, but interestingly enough, this winner didn't lead his own league in any offensive category besides sacrifice flies, which is not really a determining factor for winning MVP. Always a glove first player, the MVP winner randomly saw an outburst of offensive production that propelled his career and team to new heights, but despite being outperformed by many of his contemporaries, a legendary second half and the end of a 12-year playoff drought scored him a unanimous NL MVP victory. This is the story of Ken Caminiti, baseball's forgotten MVP. Caminiti's MVP season came with the Padres, but the majority of his career was spent with Houston. Ken, however, was a very different player during his time in Texas, for obvious reasons. A glove-first guy, Caminiti had a 98 OPS plus in eight seasons with the Astros to start his career. He had just a 386 slugging percentage during the first part of his career, but put up a career-high 18 home runs and 847 OPS in his final year of the stretch. Instead of betting on Ken to continue this kind of production, however, Houston pulled off a massive massive 12-player trade in the offseason of 1994. Derek Bell and five others headed over to Houston while Caminiti, Steve Finley, and four others left for San Diego. 1995 was Caminiti's first season for the Padres, and he immediately set new career highs in batting average on base, slugging, OPS, home runs, and RBI. Those 1995 Padres didn't go very far with just a 70 and 74 record, but with Caminiti matching Tony Gwynn's OPS plus of 137, the club now had a potent offense that they could work with. Caminiti, a defensively gifted guy as mentioned before, also took home his first gold glove this season at the hot corner. But all of this would pale in comparison to the season that I've been alluding to, which was 1996. Now, I want to preface this discussion by saying that Ken Caminiti was a steroid user. It's no secret. It's something that he actually boldly admitted to after his playing days ended in 2002. While talking with Tom Verducci of Sports Illustrated, he explained how he would drive to Mexico to buy his steroids without drawing any attention from the media. He was one of the first players to admit to using steroids. Aside from the fact that half of MLB hitters were using steroids during their peak in the mid to late 90s, Caminiti also played through the entirety of the 1996 season with a torn rotator cuff, not getting surgery to fix said issue until after the season finished. This was a tough dude, not one to be taken lightly for sure. Caminiti's start to the season wasn't MVP caliber by any means. He hit an impressive 343 clip in April but had just two home runs, and he saw his numbers dip drastically in May due to nagging shoulder injuries that kept him off the field. He saw his OPS dip to a season-worst 767 monthly mark in June despite clubbing six home runs. By the All-Star break, Caminiti had put together an 859 OPS with 18 doubles, 12 home runs, and 49 RBI, enough for him to make the NL All-Star roster that year. Caminiti was having a good season, one above his usual standards for sure, but he was about to have a second half that would go down in baseball history. Caminiti brought home 26 RBI and a 1.103 OPS in July as he began to heat up on a torrid pace, but his roller coaster ride of a 1996 season hit its absolute apex in August of that year. Caminiti slugged over 800 in what was easily the best month of his entire playing career. His 14 home runs and 38 RBI led all major league hitters during this month, as the Padres cruised to an 18-10 record in August. One of the most well-remembered games from his monster 1996 season came in this very month in the Mexico series against the New York Mets. Caminiti, feeling ill from dehydration and low blood sugar 
temperature levels demanded that he stay in Bruce Bochy's lineup instead of resting. He pumped intravenous fluids and candy bars into his system and mustered enough strength to not only play in the game, but hit two home runs against all odds. Caminiti smacked nine more home runs in September to go along with a monthly best 375 batting average and 465 on base percentage, completing one of the greatest second halves of a season that baseball fans have ever seen. After a 9 and 19 June that derailed the promise of the first two months of their season, the Padres rode Caminiti to a 43 and 30 second half en route to their first National League West Division title and playoff berth in a dozen years. San Diego would fizzle out of the playoffs, getting swept in three games by the St. Louis Cardinals, but Caminiti did all he could, clubbing three home runs in the three losses. But Caminiti had put himself and the Padres on the map with the monstrous three month stretch that he had just had, including 28 second half home runs, 81 RBI, a 360 batting average, and a 1.203 OPS. In terms of all time second half performances, very few hitters have rivaled this level of production. Most recently, Christian Yelich posted a 367 batting average and 1.219 OPS, with 25 home runs in the second half of 2018 en route to an NL MVP victory of his own. Manny Ramirez posted an insane 388 batting average and 1.209 OPS, with 19 home runs after his trade from Boston to the Dodgers propelled their run to the playoffs in 2008. Just a year prior to Caminiti in the strike shortened 1995 season, Albert Bell became a god among men and crushed 36 home runs for a 787 slugging clip in the second half. In George Brett's 1980 AL MVP season, his 421 batting average in the second half propelled him to just 10 ticks off of that illustrious 400 batting average in a full season. This is a pretty fun group of guys for Caminiti to join with his own dominant second half. But as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, Caminiti did not lead the MLB or NL for that matter in any major offensive category aside from sacrifice flies. Here are his ranks among all NL hitters from that season. His numbers are still fantastic, no lies there, and the league was well aware of how great of a defender Ken was as he won his second consecutive Gold Glove Award and would win again next year. Caminiti's lack of leadership in any category makes his NL MVP win, where he secured every first place vote, a bit perplexing in retrospect. For reference, Florida's Gary Sheffield hit 42 home runs and led the NL with a 465 on base and 1.090 OPS and ended up finishing sixth in voting, which is kind of strange. Still, Caminiti was a unanimous winner, and it was only the fourth time to that point that a National Leaguer won the award unanimously, as he joined Orlando Cepeda in 1967, Mike Schmidt in 1980, and Jeff Bagwell in 1994. He did benefit from two key factors, obviously the monstrous second half that he had, which led his RBI total to 130 on the year, and the leadership he displayed for San Diego that year, helping them return to the playoffs. Even though he didn't lead in any major offensive categories, Caminiti still achieved one of the greatest seasons by a third baseman ever. Only four third basemen in the expansion era have had a single season with 35 or more doubles, 40 or more home runs, and an OBP over 400. Caminiti achieved this in his MVP season, and Chipper Jones did this in his 1999 NL MVP season. Troy Glaus and Alex Bregman achieved this feat to round out the group of four. The accolades don't stop there, either. Just four since 1963 have had a season with an OBP over 400 and a slugging clip over 620, with Caminiti joining an elite class the likes of 2000 AL MVP Alex Rodriguez, 1999 NL MVP Chipper Jones, and 2013 AL MVP Miguel Cabrera, with Caminiti being the only unanimous winner of the bunch here. Here's an interesting fact about his MVP win in general. He's one of just four players in baseball since 1960 to receive MVP votes just one season in his career, but still win the MVP award in said season. Shohei Otani, who did so in 2021, and he's likely to leave this club with his future in MLB looking very bright. Willie McGee did this in 1985 as he won MVP for the NL champion St. Louis Cardinals, and Willie Hernandez did this in 1984 as he won both AL MVP and Cy Young as a dominant reliever for the world champion Detroit Tigers. Oh yeah, they beat the Padres in that World Series. Fun fact. After this season, Caminiti returned down to earth but remained productive for the newly competitive San Diego Padres. He'd make the All-Star team again in 1997 and take home his third consecutive gold glove while clubbing 26 home runs with a 141 OPS plus. In an injury plague season in 1998, Caminiti fought through all of his ailments to help his club make their first World Series since 1984. Overall, in this four-year stretch for the Padres, he clubbed 121 home runs with 396 RBI and a 147 OPS plus. But despite his MVP level play for four years in San Diego, they opted to not offer him a contract after 1998, and Caminiti returned home to Houston for the final years of his career. Though it was harder for him to stay on the field in his late 30s, he still hit at an impressive clip in his second stint with Houston and had a legendary three-homer performance in their 1999 NLD 
CBS loss. After the 2001 season, the then 38-year-old Caminiti decided to call it a career after 15 years, a silver slugger, three all-star appearances, three gold gloves, and of course, the 1996 NL MVP award. Caminiti had his own demons outside of his steroid usage, though. He was checked into rehab in 2000 for alcoholism and opiates, and he'd be arrested for possession of cocaine on multiple occasions a few years down the line. This ultimately led to his untimely death in 2004 at the young age of 41. He was inducted into the Padres Hall of Fame in 2016 in a touching ceremony for the Friar Faithful. His playing legacy left behind an NL MVP, but his post-playing career showed him as a brave trailblazer that would help calm down the rampant steroid usage that defined MLB in the 1990s and early 2000s. He became one of the first athletes to speak of said usage candidly and honestly. Some would view this as a detriment to that MVP win, and they're justified in that belief, but in my time researching baseball's complicated and nuanced history, I've come to accept that many have cheated, reached new heights, and subsequently gotten away with it scot-free. Roids or not, it takes a brave man to admit when he cheated. He had his character flaws and his own demons like many other idolized athletes in history, and while his career was not always up to this MVP type caliber of play, I had a great time analyzing how his 1996 season measured up against some of the greatest hitters to ever do it, and I hope you had fun with me. And now a word from today's sponsor, Manscaped. Guys, Father's Day is just around the corner, and my friends over at Manscaped are here to ensure that all the father figures out there are looking up to snuff this June. Manscaped's Performance Package 4.0, which includes their signature Lawnmower 4.0, is the perfect bundle to tackle any and all old man hair from head to toe. Treat your dad and yourself, and join the 4 million other men men worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer. You'll also find the Weed Whacker Ear and Nose Hair Trimmer, the Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant, Crop Reviver Toner, Performance Boxer Briefs, and a travel bag inside their performance package. Manscaped reduces grooming accidents thanks to their advanced skin safe technology, which is used on all their devices. Dads, buy this for yourself. Sons, buy this for you and your dad. Ladies, buy this for your man and your dad. And dog daddies, you deserve this treat too. I think I'm getting a little off topic here. Whether he's mowing the lawn taking out the trash or golfing in the sun, make sure your dad is prepared to take on anything. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code OLIVE at manscaped.com and do your dad some justice on this Father's Day. Thanks to Manscaped for sponsoring today's video and I'll see you guys next time.